Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radio detectives. And check out our Instagram, instagram.com slash great detectives. Well, our listener support campaign gets underway. I will have some talk about that after the program. Uh, of course, you can support the show uh, on a one-time basis, uh, but you can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go over to patreon.greatdetectives.net. And thank you to Paul for increasing his pledge from the Seamus level of $4 per month to the Detective Sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Again, thank you so much for your support. Well, now it's time to get into this week's episode of Casey Crime Photographer. The original air date, November 20th, 1947, and the title is Earned Reward. The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation... Brings you Crime Photographer. Hi, Ethelbert. Hello, Casey. What did you think of the royal wedding? Oh, Casey, it's a shame. I couldn't get off to go to it. You? You mean you got an invitation? Sure, I've known him for years. You know Mountbatten? Mountbatten? Yeah. No, I mean Henry Royal. You know him, the cop on the beat here. Oh, I thought for a minute you were famous. Oh, Casey, but Ethelbert is. You know, he works for Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Earned Reward. <laughs> Eight o'clock in the evening, the Blue Note Cafe. Casey, camera slung over his shoulder and a heavy equipment case resting beside his high stool, is sitting at the bar when a little man carrying a similar press camera and photographer's case enters the street. Hello, Casey. Shorty, glad to see you, fella. I thought I'd find you here. Now, you wanted to see me? Didn't you think I'd be looking you up? This is payday. You lent me a hundred bucks last week, Casey, so here's ten of it back. Ah, put that dough back in your pocket. Your kid's still in the hospital. But she's okay now. Came through the operation well. That's good. And the missus made me promise I'd give you this today. That century pulled us out of a mighty tough spot. And now you she... tell the missus to forget it for a while. If one camera guy can't help another without women butting in, it's too bad. Okay, Casey. Going on a job, Joey? Oh, just a political meeting in the old Caledonian Hall on Farley Street. Oh, one of those backstage fillers, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, after the beat you got on that Bernstein killing, you can afford to sit back for a while. I got the break of a lifetime on that Bernstein job, didn't I? Yeah, I'll say you did. You were only a few feet away when Joe Mosley shot him. Oh, not that close. Mosley had made his getaway before I could get a real hot shot of him. But I got swell close up to Bernstein lying in the gutter before the cops showed up. Yeah, you know, it's too bad hot pictures like that were wasted. <laughs> what do you mean, wasted? They should have been running a good paper like the Express instead of that lousy sheet you work for. Oh, nuts to you. <laughs> Here you are, Casey. Uh, thanks, Edelbert. You know Shorty Irwin of the Globe, don't oh, you? Oh, sure. Hiya, Shorty. Oh, fine, Edelbert. Casey tells me you're the guy who beat him and all the other press photographers on the Bernstein murder. Yeah, that was my lucky day. Say, uh, I see a reward's been offered for information leading to the capture of Joe Mosley, who shot Bernstein. Yeah, 5,000 bucks. Oh, that's a nice piece of change. I could sure use it. Mm, you and me both. 
I hear the cops been looking for him almost two weeks now without finding hide or hair of him. He's a smart cookie. Ah. Just a dumb, kill-crazy gorilla who's had a lot of luck and a clever, crooked lawyer for a brother. And now, when the cops catch him, even a mouthpiece like his brother Frank can't save him from the chair after that Bernstein job. Ah, well, Frank usually has some shush to trick up his sleeve, Casey. He'll go all out to save Joe like he did for his other brother, Tony. Got him out after two years. Hey, there's three Mosley brothers? Oh, sure. Tony was a camera guy like Casey and me, Ethelbert, on the old Inquirer. Until he got caught doing a blackmail business on the side. He got two years for that. <laughs> Should have had ten. He'll be back in this town now, running a little photo studio on the south side. I guess he's been keeping his nose clean, though. I wouldn't lay any bets on that. Well, say, I gotta get down to East Farley Street. Yeah, I gotta be moving toward the office. Now, I'll see you guys later. And, uh, I'm much obliged, Casey. Oh, forget it, Shorty. Do my best to the missus and the kid, huh? I will. So long. So long, fellas. So long. So long, Shorty. Nice little guy, Shorty Irwin. Yeah, he's tough. I hear his kid's been sick. Well, she's okay now, he says. Oh, that's good. One of the fellas on his paper tells me he's had an awful lot of expense with her. Said Shorty even had to hawk his life insurance to raise dough. Did you hear that? No, I didn't. He was uh, thanking you for something when he went out. Casey, uh, he was you... thanking me for a tip on a horse I gave him. Oh. The tips you give out on horses don't call for gratitude. They call for revenge. But nuts to you. Well, I got to be going. Uh, put this sandwich on the cup, Ethelbert, will you? After Annie and I stepped out last week, angel face, I'm a little short. Okay. Yeah. Well, so long. So long. Well, here comes Miss Williams. Oh, hello, Annie. Hi there. Hey, Casey, there's a big fire downtown, and city uh, desk told me to pick you up and get down there right what away. What kind of fire? Where downtown? An old frame tenement house. People are trapped in it. Hey, that's front page stuff. Sure, come on. It's on East Farley Street. Yeah. East Farley yeah. Street? Holy smoke. The shorty's already on his way there. That little mug will see that fire and get another beat on him. Well, he's a pal of yours, Casey. What do you... I got no pals when it comes to getting pictures. Come on, Ann. We gotta make this fire before that shrimp gets all the gravy. We missed the best part of it. Another five minutes, they'll have the fire out. Boy, it must have gone up like a haystack. Uh, Shorty probably got it while the blaze was at its best. He had a head start, too. Well, I'll take another shot. It won't be any good. Well, hurry up. I want to find the fire captain and get some dope on the people who are trapped in there. Okay. All right, come on. Captain Glennon ought to be in charge. Yeah, there he is. Hey, Cap! Hello, Casey. You just got here? Yeah. Hey, was Shorty Irwin here while it was going good? Yeah. I saw Shorty working his camera all over the place. Yeah, Annie, I knew it. Hey, Captain Glennon, the report we got was that several people were trapped in this tenement. Uh, we think one man was caught in there, but no one else. Oh, one man? A neighborhood bum who... Hey, Stanley, straighten out that number two hose line. Okay, Captain. Uh, you say the man was a neighborhood bum, Captain? Well, that's our guess, Miss Williams. Uh, this tenement had been condemned and was empty. An unidentified man was seen going into it tonight. Probably some poor devil who had no other place to sleep. Screams were heard from the rear, but we couldn't make any attempt at rescue. That's your story to phone in, Annie. Can't get any more until the ashes are cool enough for men to go in there. Well, that won't be long the way we've watered this place. You better stick around. Yeah, we will. Yeah, well, thanks for everything, Cap. See you later. Yeah, so long, Casey. Hey, where are you going, Casey? To the roof, one of those tenements back there. And may get a high angle shot. Maybe Shorty didn't look at that. Come on. Okay. There's an alley here that we can cut through and save time. It's terribly dark. Yeah, these buildings here cut off what's left of the fire glow. You can see a thing right here. Neither can I. I've got a guiding sense in the dark, anyhow. Give me a hand, I'll help you. Oh! Ow. Hey, what's the matter? Stumbled at this up. Almost broke my big toe. Look at it. With this, this box. <laughs> <laughs> Did that kick you gave it make your toe feel better? I don't see anything funny. I don't see anything at all. All right, come on. We haven't got all night. Oh! Don't put the hand oh, I just stumbled into something. Hey, Casey, I almost fell, and I touched something warm and soft. What? Yeah, light a match. Light a match and see what it is. Okay. Good Lord. Hey, it's a man. Man lying on his face in blood. Here, oh, hold the match till I have a look. Okay. The guy's still warm. Turn him over and see. Casey! It's Shorty Irwin. Yeah, Shorty Irwin. Oh, wait a minute. He's not breathing. Oh, the match has gone out. Never mind the matches. Run back to the end of this alley and find a cop. Have somebody phone Logan at Homicide and hurry. Yeah, okay, Casey. And get a doctor, Annie, quick. Maybe Shorty isn't dead. Yeah, I will. The guy's got a wife and a sick kidney that broke. 
You could have shot him. Who and why? What? Who's there? It was me, Jay. Only me. <laughs> I know, Logan, is that I, I heard somebody moving just behind me, and then something hit me. Uh, according to the doc, it must have been the butt of a gun. Okay, Jimmy. See, we thought at first that you were dead, too. But Shorty is dead, huh? Yeah. 38 slug got him in the back. Went through his heart. Who could have killed a harmless little guy like him? Yeah, the same one who slugged you, Casey, from the looks of things. Yeah, but who was the killer, Logan? Haven't you found any leads? No, uh, not yet. Huh. How long have I been out? Almost half an hour, Casey. Yeah. I'm so worried. I... It's all right, kid. I'm okay. Born with a fixed go. Hey, you knew Irwin pretty well, Casey. Can't you think of some reason why... There wasn't any reason, Logan. No, don't question Casey now, Captain Logan. The doctor says he's got to go to the hospital. Hospital? Oh, no. Forget it, Annie. Logan, you remember Shorty got a beat on a Bernstein murder. Maybe Mosley thought Shorty got a picture that would help strap him in the chair and... Oh, forget about Mosley, pal. He's dead. Who's dead? Joe Mosley. He was the man who died in the tenement fire. Kid. Joe Mosley? Yeah. Fireman dragged out a charred body shortly after you were socked. He was lying just inside what was under the back door. Here's what they found on it. That watch has Joe Mosley's name engraved on the case, yeah. Casey. And the diamond ring has his initials inside. And there was some fancy bridge work in the mouth of the uh, remains that I'm pretty sure was Mosley's. It replaced some teeth that I personally had the pleasure of knocking out when he resisted arrest one time. And he... He was hiding out in that abandoned tenement. Yeah. And now the state won't have to burn him. Well, then who killed Shorty? We'll find out. Yeah. Well, I gotta get back to the office. Joe Mosley's death and poor Shorty's murder make feature stuff. These bum pictures I got of this fire. No, no, you're waiting here for the ambulance. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, now, Casey. Logan, give me my camera and my plate case. Hey, listen, pal, you ought to take it. We're nuts. Where's my stuff? Where's it? Well. Here's your tools. Uh, Casey, don't... Why should I go to the hospital? Lie there and think about that nice little guy, Shorty Irwin. Some louse shot in the back. You're not fit to be working, Casey. That's Even right. Death wants you to go home and let no, somebody... No, will you lay off, me? please? Look, wait a minute, will you? I'm trying to develop these films that I shot. You got no business in the dark room anyway, Annie. Okay, if you want me to go on. I will. I'm sorry, kid. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Okay, I know. I understand. Uh, let's see what I've got here. Hmm. Hey, I don't remember shooting anything from this angle. Here, let me see another. Annie. Hmm? I didn't take these pictures. What? But there's a shot here of... Get on the phone outside and call Logan right well, away. Sure, but you? what's it all about, Casey? What I did you find? I won't be sure. I won't be sure until I made a print of this negative. But I think I've got a picture of Shorty Irwin's murderer. Our story will continue in just a moment. Do you know how to make breakfast toast more appealing, more satisfying? Well, here's a gratifyingly simple trick. Set out a lot of jams, jellies, and marmalades. Now, not just one, but a wide selection. And see how your family responds to that symphony of taste and luscious color. And see how they smile and, and reach for another golden slice of toast. And another. Hmm. And it's so good for them, too. Now, that's the way to start the morning right. That's the simple way to supply quick energy for an active day. Yes, you can add a magic touch to any ordinary meal when you serve a gleaming assortment of fine preserves, jellies, and jams for breakfast. Now, quite naturally, the packers of these fine foods, the preserve industry of today, bring you their colorful products packed in glass. And they know, as you do, that glass completely safeguards wholesomeness and flavor. And crystal clear glass provides a rainbow of color on your table. Anchor glass containers and modern anchor hawking sealing methods bring you flavor at its peak. Anchor Glass Container and Anchor Cat are both products of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass.
Now, how'd you get this picture, Casey? Logan, I didn't get it. Shorty got it. Uh, Shorty? Uh, look, what did you do with the other equipment, Casey, Logan? The one that you thought was Shorty's. I must have been so groggy. Well, we opened it and found it empty. All the film's gone. Aha, uh-huh, that explains everything. Look, what do you see in this picture I brought you? Two guys walking up an alley with their backs turned. But one of them is looking around over his shoulder. You can see his face. And it's the face of Joe Mosley. Yeah, you're right. In spite of the watch, the ring, the bridge work, Joe Mosley wasn't burned up in that fire because Irwin was killed after the fire was almost out. That's right, Captain. It wasn't Mosley's body that was found. No, it was just some poor devil of Joe Mosley's size. The stuff planted on him, teeth and all. Yeah, sure. And the old gag was pulled so good I almost fell for it. Almost? When you did fall for it, pal. Joe Mosley's brother, Frank, the lawyer, is a smart guy. Frank knew that Joe couldn't beat the Bernstein rap once you cops got your missile. It's only possible out. It makes you think that he was dead, so he framed that fire. You think the other guy in this picture is Joe's brother, Frank? Sure. The face doesn't show, but he's Frank's bill. Yeah, if we can prove Frank was with Joe, we can nail him, too, as accessory. I've always wanted to get that tricky shite. Well, look, and look, here's what I figure happened. Yeah. Joe Mosley went into that tenement tonight and planted his watch, ring, and an extra set of bridge work on another guy who'd been smuggled in there unseen, probably doped or already dead. And then started the fire, yelled a couple of times after the fire got going, and sneaked out the back way into that alley where his brother Frank was waiting to see that everything went according to plan. Yeah, but where does Shorty Owen fit in? Shorty went into the alley for the same reason I did, Logan. Get a picture of the fire from a new angle. He saw Joe and Frank up the alley where the fire glow made it bright. He probably thought of that 5000 bucks reward. He was a camera toter, so his first instinct was to get a picture first. He called the cops afterwards, but Shorty snapped his shutter and started to run. Putting the film, he just exposed into his case as he ran. And then, uh, Joe shot him in the back. And he was about to take the film from Shorty's case when we came into the alley. That's it, Adam. The box that I stumbled over was really Shorty's equipment case. After Joe slugged me, he took the film from my case, thinking that they were short. Yeah. Yeah, that must be the way it happened. And now we still have to find Joe and Frank Mosley. Yeah. I think I know how to get both of them. Where? What do you mean? Well, all you got to do, Logan. Wait a minute. Before I pass out any more information, Logan, I want an understanding about that 5000 bucks reward. Reward? Yeah. I want it. I want it all. No divvy. With you or any other cop. Huh? A pal of yours has been bumped off, and you'll help nail the guys who killed him only if you can collect five grand. Logan, you heard him, Miss Williams. You want to speak? In my racket, we know what guys will do for money. Okay. Okay. I said I want the five grand and no divvy. I don't make any deal. Oh, out for the pot yourself now that I've shown a lot of cards? No, but I've had, I'd have a legitimate right to be out for it. I wasn't a personal friend of Shorty Irwin. You lout! I'm playing this my own way. And I'll see you later, Logan. Hey, Casey, wait for me. I'm not waiting for anybody. And the next time I see you, Logan, I think I'll knock your teeth out. Casey, where are you going? Get in my car, Annie. Go home, please. I'm going with you. You know, Logan didn't mean what he said. Didn't he? No, he couldn't have. Spoke of it so suddenly, Casey, out of a clear sky. It took him by surprise. Now, uh, why are you so interested in that reward? You... You figure it out for yourself, honey. Here's the car. Better take a cab home. I'm not going home. I'm going with you. Okay, if you want to stick your neck out, get in. I don't think I'll enjoy your company, but I will go along with you to satisfy my curiosity. Your neck and your curiosity. Where are we going? To the south side and through red lights. What's on the south side? A photographer's studio run by a guy who calls himself Jackson. Now that you've thought out enough to tell me that one of Joe Mosley's brothers runs Jackson Studio, I would like Annie, to know... Annie, wait a minute. I, I'm sorry I acted like a heel to you, but it was Logan. He made me so sore. Well, I... Say for it, Logan, if you want to, but will you explain why you're going to call on this Jackson, who is really Tony Mosley? Well, Frank Mosley will want to have a film that Joe thinks that he took from Shorty's kid to develop. 
to make sure that they have the incriminating picture. And Tony, Mosley brother number three, is the logical guy to do it. But they took the films in the alley why it's over an hour ago. I know. I don't think Frank would take a chance of just driving to his place in the bee line. Laying even money that we get to Tony's about the same time they do. Well, if you're right, you can't capture a killer like Joe Mosley single handed. Give you odds on that. Casey, you don't even carry a gun. Got one tonight. Barred it before we left headquarters. Oh. Now, Tony's joint's just up this block across the street. Park right here. Mm-hmm. Studios is upstairs, Frank. Huh? Yeah, on the second floor. Hardly anyone on this street. No policemen. Look, we can't take a chance on going uh, up there. We're not going up there, Annie. You're staying right in the car. Oh, no. Yes, honey, look, I want you to be out here watching. If you don't see me come outside in five minutes, you make for that drugstore in the corner and phone the cops. Well, yeah, okay. All, all right, right but if you have to call him in, make it very clear that I'm not splitting that reward. <laughs> You developed every film, Tony. Every exposed one you brought me, Frank. Oh, you know, there's nothing but pictures of the fire here. I see. Maybe I rubbed out that little guy for nothing, Frank. Yeah, but we saw him with his camera pointed at us in that alley. Yeah, you used to bring this. You rubbed out Bernstein before witnesses. But even a lawyer like me can't make a jury believe you didn't do it. Now I think you've done something dumber than usual. And you can't figure out what. Stop calling me dumb, oh, Frank. Shut up, you screwball. Now let me think. Hmm. Well, then that other guy, the one you slugged in the alley. You don't know who he was. How could I know? It was pitch dark. Uh, with a girl, you told me. Didn't you hear them say something? That hey, might... she called the guy, uh, Casey, I think it was. He, he seemed to know the guy I just shot. She called the guy Casey, Joe? Yeah, yeah, I know. Casey, Morning Express. Sure, he's the answer. He'd carry an equipment case. Those were his films you got, Joe. Then the film you want is Frank? The cops probably have it by now. Hey, we got to make tracks and fast. Then get out of my studio. Here, quick. I don't want to be mixed up in your murder. Hey, we're going, Tony. We're going. But burn those films you developed and forget your thoughts tonight. No one will learn anything out of me, Frank. But you and Joe, get out. Get out of that, Frank. Yeah. Wait a minute. Is that right of one? Both the signal. What do you mean? Hey, we left a lookout in the car, Tony. That horn meant somebody's coming up here. Cops have trailed you to my place. No, no, no. That signal don't mean cops. So I'll open the door quick. You take care of whoever's coming up the stairs, but no shooting unless you have to. Yeah, okay. I'll open the door. Take up here, Mr. Guy, and quick. I, I... Drop that gat in your hand, I'll let you have it. Okay. Never had any luck packing a rod. Shut up anyway. and step inside and keep quiet. Frank, it's Casey. I know. How are you, Frank? Hello, Tony. Mug with a gun, of course, is brother Joe. What were you doing on them stairs? Was coming up to have Tony take my picture. A wise guy, yeah. Shut you. up, Joe. Where's the film, Casey? What film? Come clean, I figured out what happened. Yeah, I guess you have. Well, the cops have the film, Frank, and the cops have this joint surrounded right now. Frank. Now take it easy, Tony. <laughs> that bluff won't work, Casey. We have a lookout on the street who would have let us know if any cops were around. <laughs> Just as he tipped us to expect you. Oh, yeah. Just sort of thought of that. That sock on the head Joe gave me didn't do my brains much good. You're going to get more than a sock on the head this time, wise guy. That's right. I can guess why you had a hunch to come here, Casey. You can't figure out why you were sap enough to come along. You know, you put yourself in quite a spot now. You better not pull any rough stuff, Frank. I wasn't such a sap as you Hold think. Hold Someone's coming up the stairs, Frank. Yeah, I hear him. This guy makes a whisper, Joe. You know what to do. Yeah. The Schultz didn't give us any signal. What? Yeah, Schultz is not. Go on, let him in. Oh, you look at it. Yeah. Put me in, guy. Okay, Schultz. Hey, who's a dame with you? Casey. Annie. Get in there, lady. Oh, I saw the big guy leave the skirt in the car when he started up here, boss. So after I gave you the signal, I kept an eye on her. She started toward the drugstore with us. The telephone a minute ago. You put a gun in my back, Casey. That's all right, Well, you've done a nice job, Schultz. Well, Casey, if you depended on this girl to bring the cup, she won't now. I'm sorry, Casey. You two have acted so dumb in coming here alone. I got an idea. You've been even dumber. If you didn't turn that film over to the cop. You're wrong, Frank. Captain Logan of Homicide has got that nuts. If he knew about it, he'd uh, come here with you. Now, listen. You listen to me. Where is that film? Casey just told You're me You're going to tell us the truth. Tell us where it is. 
Right. Joe, you know how to make them talk. Yeah, I know. And start with the dame. Right now. Oh, let her go. Keep the guy covered, Joe. Hey, he was too slow. Right? Break his way out, Mark. Get him right down. Joe, I'll fix him, Frank. Okay, can I go? Yes, please. Oh, Got him. Now, oh, Mr. Casey won't bother us for a long time. Mug sock me before I can't hold him with my cat. Go and talk Joe Mosley and get the way with it. I'm going to beat his head in. No, no, hit him again. Just don't. watch me. Oh. Hey, what's that? Joe's been shot. Take him up, you guys. Shut up. Hey, the rest of us are at the door. And your lookout came up here with Miss Williams. Mosley, it gave me a chance to post my man. You killed Joe. You killed my brother. I've saved the state expense. And if you make a move that gives me any excuse, I'll save it another bill for juice. Get the cuffs on him, boys. I love it. Logan, how did you know we came here? Well, there's no way of keeping you quiet tonight, is there, Keith? You've recovered from another knockout. My head, my head. Hey, Casey. Oh, it's all right, Eddie. I'm okay. Logan, I ask you, how did you know? I simply followed your car here, Sap. You didn't think I'd let a bloodsucker like you collect the 5000 bucks reward. Oh, I see. That's all yours, Logan. You want it. You earned it. Only... Only you wanted it. For Shorty Irwin's widow. Uh, well, she's going to get it. Logan. I knew that was your idea from the first. And I got sore at you for trying to make a deal with me instead of coming clean. Shorty's picture and that reward for his family, no matter what anyone did afterward. And the next time you infer that I'd cheat a widow and a kid, I'll knock your teeth out. Okay, okay, Logan. I got it coming. Only, only just the teeth, please. Please don't anybody suck me on the head again tonight. <laughs> We'll join the crowd of the Blue Note in just a moment. It's just a week to Thanksgiving and a real old-fashioned turkey dinner with all the fixings. And to make that fine meal even finer, serve plenty of delicious oven-baked side dishes. You know, there are so many tasty dishes that'll make your dinner look better and taste better when they're baked in Fire King oven glass. Sweet potatoes, baked onions, baked tomatoes, cornbread, pies, and puddings. Why, your family will enjoy those steaming casserole dishes when they come to the table warm, fragrant, and appetizing in beautiful pale blue Fire King oven glass. And it cuts down the work after the meal because Fire King oven glass is so amazingly easy to clean. Now, you'll find Fire King oven glass at 5 and 10 cent stores, department stores, and all other stores selling household glass. Fire King prices are amazingly low, and every piece is guaranteed for two years Against oven breakage. Fire King Oven Glass is a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Hello, Miss Williams. Captain Logan. Hello, Hello Ethelbert. Uh, say, where's Casey? He's home in bed, Ethelbert, on uh, Dr. Logan's orders. Uh, you sent the guy to bed, Captain? That's right, Ethelbert. And the two men I assigned to take him home have orders to make sure that's where he goes. <laughs> well, what's so funny? <laughs> hey, look who's coming in the door with those bandages on his head. What? Casey! Hiya, folks. Meet my pal. Sergeant, I thought I told you to see that Casey... Now, wait a minute, Logan. That's not their fault. What do you mean? They brought me here. This is where I told him I live. Boy. All right. <laughs> Set him up, Ethelbert. A guy who earns a $5,000 reward can afford to pay for it. These are on you, Casey. At $5,000? Uh, Ethelbert, can you lend me five bucks more? I'm still flat. <laughs> Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass, Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass.
Crime Photographer is directed by John Deep. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, a really good story. I do like the uh, perspective on Casey where he helps out his friend Shorty, but does not make a big deal about it. He, uh, it's part, I think, of the reputation uh, of being, you know, tough. And it's also the thought that it's, uh, good things shouldn't be done to make people look good or uh, to be showy, which I think also goes to, you know, why he would not outright say to Logan what he wanted with the reward. Casey's ethic is, this should go without saying. And there's, I think, some frustration that Captain Logan is trying to push him into uh, disclosing something and making an insinuation. Of course, it turns out Logan's just being stubborn. But it's an interesting dynamic and a look to uh, a different sort of approach to giving than uh, is often the case today. Now, a couple of interesting notes from uh, bluenotebulletin.blogspot.com. The first thing that was really interesting about this is that this is one of two uh, Casey scripts that were actually based on a uh, short story in Black Mask by George Herman Cox, the uh, creator of Casey. The other script is sadly not in circulation. Dr. Webb over at Blue Note Bulletin notes that there was some weird stuff with the production on this, uh, that, um, it w that the script that was supposed to be performed was uh, a script called Hot Ice, which was another reused script, but they replaced uh, that reused script with another reused script. Uh, because this one had also aired on Casey. Uh, so, wasn't sure what was behind that. Uh, there, w uh, this once again is a case where, uh, he points out we had a witch's tale script used, and then two guest scripts, and then this script, which was reused, with one of the big alterations to this script being that, uh, last week's episode was referenced so that it ties in with what's been going on with the show at this point. All right, so now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, listener support. And we're going to take pretty much the same approach we took during our spring campaign, which is kind of low-key in comparison to uh, campaigns we've done throughout the history of the podcast. We've had a, a very good past six months on the financial side of the podcast. We've had the uh, dynamic insertion ads. And on top of that, we've been blessed to have eight episodes with named sponsors, such as June's Journey, The Lost Diaries, Storyworth, and HelloFresh. And I hope that you know, sort of thing continues. But I've been doing this podcasting thing now. Since the Bush administration, I've seen a lot of ups and downs and revenue sources coming and going. The one thing that has really helped me with the show is the support of our Patreon uh, supporters. That's regular, reliable support by more than 250 great fans of the program who have pledged amounts ranging from $2 up to $30 per month. And that really helps give a reliable source of income to uh, the program and allows me to make plans and know that regardless of what happens with this program or that, 
our Patreon supporters will be there for me. So I really appreciate that. Uh, we're now in our sixth year. And so that is actually going to be the entirety of my focus on the listener support campaign is just uh, Patreon supporters. Now, if you are a Patreon supporter, you get a monthly newsletter from me, which will include a personal update. And then production details of what we're doing with the program and kind of also like what we're thinking about doing, where we might be going, and different ideas that I have. Also occasionally be requests for feedback or polls. Uh, and of course there is the annual poll where we ask our Patreon supporters what we should do for our summer series over on the Amazing World of Radio. This year, the winner was the Summer of Summer Replacement programs we've been playing, which I hope you've uh, enjoyed. Also, uh, sometimes when I've got the audio, post something early. A great example of this is that uh, we'll be resuming for a short time brand new podcast of the Old Time Radio Superman program. And the first episode has been posted for our uh, Patreon supporters, even though it won't drop for uh, regular listeners until September the 3rd. So you can become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters over at patreon.greatdetectives.net for $2 per month. And I will say, say this, that a lot of folks do like to give to the program on a one-time basis. And you can do that at support.greatdetectives.net using the Zelle app to box13 at greatdetectives.net or by mail to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. And if you choose to support the program in that way, we welcome that. If you'd like to request one of the thank you gifts that we give with that over on uh, our website support.greatdetectives.net uh, we've still got those listed and we will send those as requested and we truly appreciate any support people choose to give to the program it's you know such an honor when when people support the program and to quote the immortal forest gump that's all i've got to say about that now i did want to remind you in season 13, we'll reach the end of Casey Crime Photographer and we'll present The Adventures of Sam Spade. It'll be quite a while yet until we get to Sam Spade. It'll be sometime next summer. Well, now I want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Matt, Patreon supporter since October 2016, Currently supporting us at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support, Matt. And during our listener support campaign, you can join Matt and all of our other Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, that will do it for today. If you are listening to this podcast on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. Mark the notification bell to be notified whenever new videos are added. And be sure to like the video. Join us back here tomorrow for the adventures of Philip Marlowe. Next Saturday, we'll be bringing you the only episode of Top Secrets of the FBI. Next Tuesday, join us for the adventures of Bill Lance. And then next Saturday, join us for Squad Room. And of course, join us back here next Monday for another episode of Casey Crime Photographer. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.